Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live program here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno on this Friday morning. Glad to have you along. Today we're going to be talking about a serious topic, and that is child abuse. That's right. So much of it goes on here in the Fresno County area, and we have an expert in the house to talk about that. 436 MeTV, option 11, back in a moment. <laughs> program on a Friday morning on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. I'm so glad you're here. And before we get into our serious topic today, I do want to pass along a couple of items uh, before we get into the meat of this uh, live program here. And that is that Captain Pete Dern still in the hospital today, but holding a news conference and speaking to the media for the very first time. In fact, it just started. We'll talk about that uh, with Dennis Hart on Monday. We'll talk about Captain Pete Dern and some of the skin graft operations that he's gone through so many since he battled that uh, house fire and then he fell through the garage, had burns over 70% of his body. So Captain Pete Dern uh, wishing him and his family a speedy recovery, of course, and speaking to the media for the first time. Another note to pass along, something that took place in South Carolina this morning. They took down the Confederate flag in front of the State House. The flag has flown there for more than 50 years. Thousands showed up, but it was a quiet ceremony. There is the Confederate flag, and it will go into a Confederate museum with all the other artifacts now. And so that take, took place early this morning in South Carolina. Another note to pass along, and a very sad one at that, Kenny Stabler, the former quarterback for the Oakland Raiders, passed away yesterday at the age of 69 of colon cancer, that coming from his ex-wife. Uh, news reporters were able to confirm it through family members and his ex-wife. Kenny Stabler played so many years college football with Alabama under Bear Bryant back in the 60s, won a national title in 65, and then of course played 10 years with the Oakland Raiders, fought with Al Davis many times, uh, was coached by John Madden, and of course Kenny Stabler guided the Raiders to that Super Bowl victory over the Minnesota Vikings back in 1977, a game that took place at the Rose Bowl. So, very sad day for the Raider Nation. Another one has passed away, Kenny Stabler, at the age of 69. Now to our program today. We hear so much about child abuse, especially right here in the Fresno County area and in the state of California. But what to do about it? You know, most of the victims are too afraid to speak up. Now, I'm going to roll a piece of videotape, but caution, my friends, it is and can be very disturbing. Let's roll it right now and show you what I'm talking about. You know, if you go to YouTube and type in child abuse, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of videos that pop up. But this one in particular caught my eye for some reason. This is Nanny Cam, a father providing a DVD to a local news station showing a nanny beating a child who's not even a year old. The woman was arrested on child battery charges, and yes, this tiny child not able to speak up for it, uh, himself. And the only reason this nanny was caught, the father set up a sting, hidden cameras in the home when the nanny was supposed to be caring for the baby. Instead, she was seen slapping, hitting, throwing things, even violently tossing that little one into a playpen. All too sickening, if you ask me, a parent's worst nightmare. The father agreed to share this video as long as they didn't show his face uh, on the interview. Although this abuse didn't take place in Fresno, I uh, want to know the numbers. I want to know the numbers right here in Fresno County, if possible, and is child abuse under control or out of control in our area? Keep in mind, most of the young victims usually don't even recognize abuse, 
and don't even disclose it if they recognize it for months, even years on end. Child abuse is a complex issue. In most cases, the perpetrator is someone, the parent or the child knows. I can't look at that. What is she doing? Unbelievable. Live in our studio now is Esther Franco. She is the executive director of the Fresno Council on Child Abuse Prevention. The first organization that we think of when we think of child abuse, though, is CPS, Child Protective Services. We'll ask Esther about that as well, but we'll talk about her organization and what child abuse is and how to prevent it and how to turn someone in if you see it. 436 Me TV, option 11, back in just a moment. Hello, I'm John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. Francisco Molina Nieve has been on the run since March 2008. The police and the FBI need your help tracking this coward down. He's wanted for brutally beating his girlfriend and for the use of a firearm. He has three freckles and a crescent shape under his right eye. Call the Colorado FBI at 303-629-7171 if you know where he's hiding. A top secret location. It's the spies who love me. Bringing together me TV's top super spies to fight evil at a memorable moment's notice. They're daring. That's right. Free. Now what are we gonna do? The best we can. Swab. Does that apply to me, Oscar? Possibly. And smart? The old finger in the gun trick. Maxwell Smart. Me TV Fresno. Channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Child abuse, it is rampant in some areas of our country. Is it rampant here in the state of California? And what about here in Fresno County? Esther Franco is here. She is the executive director of the Fresno Council on Child Abuse Prevention. So Esther, what are the numbers here in Fresno? What do they tell us? Well, there's a, approximately 18,000 allegations of abuse that are reported to CPS, Child Protective Services, annually you know, give or take a few thousand. 18,000, now is that, is that in um, Fresno County or does that just, just that's constitute just, just city, uh, Fresno City proper? That's just Fresno County. The, Fresno the, County, yes. so it covers the whole county. Right. So 18,000 cases, so. Approximately, so, that's what CPS reports. So what, okay, so what are you seeing? What kind of abuse? Well, what, well first of all, well, sexually, sexual abuse, there's four types of abuse which is physical, emotional, um, neglect, and then, of course, sexual abuse. And sexual Wait a abuse... Say that again. There are four. Four types of abuse. Yeah, same again. Physical, physical, which is easy to detect, as you can see it. Um, which is verbal or emotional abuse. That's two. And then uh, sexual. sexual abuse, and then there's neglect. Neglect, okay. Like say, if you don't feed them, you throw them in a closet or something and neglect them and, right. and starve them to death and all that kind of stuff. That's, right. Obviously, that's abuse. Right, absolutely. And it, you see something like that in Fresno? Uh, you, oh, you, absolutely. You would see starvation? Well, we have the highest poverty rates in the nation, about 32%, which is the highest. Almost one-third of our population is in poverty. So I'm talking about purposely starving a child. Well, purposely, whether it's intentional or unintentional, if you're not able to provide for your child, that is a form of neglect. So with, with clothing, you're not able to provide for them, you know, the basics, food, shelter, but also emotional abuse. If you're not, if you have mental issues, if you're not able to provide emotional support for them, children need love to grow. There's a lot of there's a lot of kids that are economically um, you know advantaged, and but their parents have plenty of money. They hire they hire nannies to take care of them. But if you don't provide that love to the child, that the, the child cannot grow healthy. Mm -hmm. Children need love to grow. They just don't need good clothes and toys and food. You know, I know something that comes to mind. If there are 18,000 abuse cases here in Fresno County, are there 18,000 people in jail on child abuse a year? <laughs> well, first of all, let me clarify. Um, for the Fresno Council on Child Abuse it, it, yeah. uh, works uh, kind of through the CPS, our Child uh, Department of Social Services or CPS, Child Welfare. Um, and so those are allegations of abuse. Whether or not they're substantiated or inconclusive or, or they're substantiated, those numbers you would have to get from CPS because we're not CPS. We're an independent agency and uh, we're mandated by a state law to um, coordinate community efforts to prevent and respond to child abuse. So what basically what our agency does is we look for what are the the uh, causal factors, what's going on in our community, like drug abuse. We have a high incidence of uh, drug abuse. Yeah. 
I so, know. and that's that's a causal factor for um, child abuse and neglect. If you're eighty percent of all child maltreatment involves some sort of substance abuse. Yeah. So if you have a lot of substance abuse in your community, you're going to have a, a high child abuse incidence. Yeah, pretty amazing uh, stuff. I do want to take a look at that videotape again, the one we played in the monologue. And yeah, it is disturbing. And yeah, it's it's outrageous. And yeah. Uh, you know, you're going to lose your temper when you see this, but you know what? We have to show it again just to show what goes on around the country, around the state of California. And there's the father who was interviewed just briefly there. They didn't want to, he didn't want his face to be shown. Uh, he did talk to the local station. Um, that was pretty much the agreement, uh, but this is, this is typical. Is this typical of, of what goes on with uh, some babysitters, some nannies? You know, I don't know. We don't know because, first of all, an infant can't tell you, a uh, one-year-old can't tell you they're being abused. Yeah, but do, yeah, but do you have any, any stats to back up um, the fact that this goes on a lot? I mean, with hidden cameras and all that? You well, other than, other than that, well, uh, FCAP is the, uh, I think, the only provider. We provide three, last year we provided 3,700 mandated reporter trainings. Mandated reporters wow. are professions, mm -hmm. professions and professionals who are mandated by state law. They work with children or around children to report uh, any type of, when they suspect child abuse. But you can't report what you don't know. You so know what I just thought of, Esther, is that we ought to be doing this show on who these people are that are abusing. I mean, what's their mental state of mind? I mean, a defenseless child like this, what, what is this woman doing and why? What's going through her mind? Well, I'm, I'm not a that's medical... What, that's what the show <laughs> ought to be about today. Like, yes. what is wrong with you? Yes, you need a me mental health professional to, to diagnose that. But obviously, that is... I mean, I would say she has mental health issues. <sighs> severe mental health issues. Wow. To be beating a, a, a newborn... I mean, an infant like that. I mean, that's yeah, only one year old. less than a year old. Mm -hmm. I mean, but this, this is common. And that, and that child will endure psychological damage. Because the, the baby's... Your, a baby's uh, brain is like a sponge so it absorbs all that anxiety yeah and so it affects it affects their their health as well yeah by the way we're looking at it take esther's shot again uh what's the bear all about here you you gave me this bear i'm gonna do this to my daughter <laughs> what's the bear all about uh the bear is is a uh, comfort teddy bear is a sign of comfort for our, um child abuse uh, prevention councils and other agencies that work in uh, this line of work. So and you brought a partner today, huh? I brought a partner, yes, our teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wearing a blue ribbon, and as you see, huh. I'm wearing a blue ribbon. Yeah, cool. um, Blue ribbon is just like how uh, pink ribbon is the yeah. symbol for yeah. breast cancer awareness. The blue ribbon is for child abuse prevention, and April is a National Child Abuse Prevention Month. But we give these bears to children because uh, FCAP uh, operates a um, the only um, National Children's Alliance, it's authorized. Uh, everything we do is evidence-based, highest standards. We provide forensic interviews. So mm -hmm. when there's allegations of abuse, you would either call law enforcement or CPS, and then they would cross-report, and then we would interview the child. And we would do it in a setting that's culturally competent, child-friendly, and we are, we're there to reduce the trauma. Because the average age of the average age or the profile of a child that we interview is a seven-year-old Hispanic girl for sexual abuse. So those are those are the numbers here in Fresno County. Okay. All right. I'll talk and, to you. Uh, I'll talk to you more about that after okay. the break. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Esther Franco is here. She is the exec executive director of the Fresno Council on child abuse prevention and i'm glad she's here glad she uh, brought the teddy bear along you're welcome to call in at 436 me tv option 11 a very sensitive topic today but one that we should discuss because you know it's outrageous when kids of any age are abused for any particular reason back in just a moment Retro TV, your home for classic television. The greatest shows in history are here for you to enjoy. Join Cosby and Colt as secret agent men in I Spy. Ride along the Ponderosa with the Cartwrights in Bonanza. Hit the beat with Joe Friday in Dragnet. And that's not all. Retro TV offers endless fun and excitement for the whole family to enjoy. Retro TV, the best in classic television. You can find Retro TV on over-the-air channel 13.4. 
When you're looking for KitchenAid innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified KitchenAid appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Back here on the program, I don't know why I'm smiling. I'm in a good mood today, but this is a very disturbing topic. And I was yes. just joking around with you on the, during the break there. But uh, we got a caller who was listening in on our conversation here. <laughs> caller, I'm glad you're patient. Uh, speak up and uh, feel free to ask your question. Go ahead. Yeah, let me ask a, a question now. Do most of the uh, women, at, they look like a little older, have no patience to take care of the infants like like the one we just uh, were looking at. I mean, it, it looks like she had some mental issues or just no no tolerance for taking care of uh, infants like that. Now, if we come across someone like that, do we have the right to call uh, authorities that, you know, this is going on? Uh, you know, because it does happen only in closed doors. But I'm very uh, upset about what, what kind of, you know, people would, you know, take care of the infants or the parents, uh, allowing the, the people to take care of their, their kids where they're going to work and all that. Now, uh, the thing that really uh, I would like to say is that, that this goes on all around. I mean, Fresno County, even uh, taking a sense uh, of, um, survey of, of this, there's more than that. Uh, but I can't say that, uh, you know, because it's also Fresno County goes all over the place, you know. But... It, oh, oh, I'm just saying older people don't have the tolerance. Uh, I'm talking about people that have mental issues, okay? And you don't know until you talk to them or evaluate them. But what, what do you do in a case like that when you feel that, uh, that your, your child has been abused, you know? Uh, I, I don't know what I would do, but I would probably forget the law and start going at the person that was taking care of my son or daughter. Okay, Esther, you're up. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, you should always report suspected abuse, and that's one of the biggest problems we have in Fresno County. There are 44 classifications of mandated reporters, but you don't have to be uh, a mandated reporter. And, and a lot of times, other than the actual parents or family members, um, teachers and family members have the most access to children. And if you suspect abuse, then you should report it. And a lot of times we won't have family members report on other family members because they're afraid. And because Why? they don't. Why are they afraid? Well, they're afraid of alienating themselves from the family. Wow, that's amazing. So you're putting your personal needs before a defenseless child's needs. Yeah. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Speak up loudly, please. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, I got two comments on the child abuse. I remember back in the 70s with individual kidnapped and killed the young boy. It was showing life, and the detectives had it in. They were walking on the lobby, and there was a man on the face phone. He could have shot to that, that man. That was a that, that was a, a dad. And he was like this, and he wanted to report it. So, and the way of doing it, I agree on that. Sometimes you have to take uh, matters into your own hand. The second comment I have is back in the, in the 60s, a family member, his son was on drugs, and he got his son and threw him against the wall. The, after he got arrested, the father went to the judge and told the judge, Judge, if you let my son go, I'm going to kill him. And the judge says, why? I said, I brought him into the world. He's no good. He's got to die. And in a way, I believe in that sort of thing, because people that do heavy crimes, all they do is, oh, poor thing, poor thing. You show sorry for him, and they go out there and do the same thing over again. How do you feel about those issues? Okay. Well, first of all, um, in terms of child abuse prevention, which is where we, we folk try to focus on primary prevention, the most dangerous time of a child's life is the first year of life. So in that particular situation, I don't know what the age of the child was. If It sounds like it was a teen. Perhaps it could have been. So, yeah, we don't know at that point. Right. I mean, it was um, a long time ago. Yeah, it was, like I said, it was a long time ago. And, and I'm not, I don't have any expertise medically or legally. 
but our our purpose is to prevent child abuse before it happens. But how do you do that? I mean, most of these cases that we hear about, 99.9% of them, mm -hmm. I mean, you hear about them after the fact, after it's already happened, after the damage right. has already been exactly. done. So and how do you, how in, how in God's name mm -hmm. <laughs> do you prevent it from happening? It is, it's, uh, child abuse is preventable and through knowledge. And that's, we, we how? do how? education, parenting knowledge. I mean, actually, um, the... Yeah, but if a parent has a drug problem, well, exactly. and I'm just, I'm just taking devil's advocate with you here. No, I'm not I know. trying to argue with you, but, but just... If a parent has a drug problem, if a parent has a bad temper, mm -hmm. like a quick trigger, You're right? How do you prevent that? Well, first of all, it's very difficult. You can't prevent. You can't uh, fix what you don't acknowledge, and that's why we are such strong advocates for no, uh, parenting knowledge. Um, Adam's project here. This uh, Adam's uh, mom. She was a single mom. Uh, she left Adam with her boyfriend, who was the whole family loved him. He was a great guy. Most uh, perpetrators are very charismatic and loving. And this is Adam, uh, right? He's one year old, and this is him on his afterwards. He's in a wheelchair. He's going to. Because why? What's because the story? he was crying, and uh, the boyfriend lost his temper, shook him, and threw him against a wall. Now he's paralyzed. Oh, my. So. Yeah. So had, um, had uh, Adam's mother and Adam's boyfriend gone through a parenting class, they would know what are the triggers. And this is, these are uh, crib hangers, door hangers that we provide. They're sponsored by Community Regional Medical Centers. These were created by uh, pediatric, uh, pedi pe pediatricians. And it shows, it tells parents what are the most dangerous yeah. things, um, yeah. issues that you're going to come across, like yeah. safe sleeping, when oh your baby's goodness. crying and it, it's going to drive you nuts, well, put the baby on kids, a crib. My kids always drove me nuts, drove both nuts? of them. I mean, I never got any sleep when they were first born. <laughs> exactly. If I, if I did that every time they woke me up, I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, they, I mean, what kind of, what kind of behavior is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, my kids kept me up all hours of the night, both of them. Right. And who tells, and who tells you that before you have the kids? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody does. The doctors so, don't tell you. Right. You know. Right. Um, so to put the baby well, in the actually, crib, walk actually away. Actually, a friend told me, uh, oh, get really? some sleep now before the baby's <laughs> born because you're not going to get sleep yeah. after it's born. So with that, we got to take a break. Esther Franco is here. We're talking about child abuse, and we're going to talk more about that and take more of your phone calls. 436 me TV option 11. Hey, I'm sure there are a lot of you out there. Maybe you were abused as a kid. Who knows? Don't be afraid to call in. You don't have to give your name, but give your opinion. Maybe even ask a question. I don't know if you were sexually abused, mentally abused, but whatever the case may be, there's a lot of people out there, and uh, they hide that information for years on end. It's in a closet. Back with our program in just a moment. Take a look at this. Let's play. This is too hip for you, I'll slow down. Let's play! Watch all your favorite classic game shows on Buzzer TV, KBBC Digital Channel 13.7. We need help to find this missing child. Hallie Cummings was seven when she went missing. She was last seen in Satsuma, Florida in February of 2009. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 11. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Hallie Cummings home. Back here with Esther Franco talking about child abuse, and I'm sure many of you out there are outraged uh, every time you hear this, and maybe some of you were abused as a child. I don't know. Fortunately, I wasn't. I had great parents, but that isn't the case with everyone. We do have an email question, and that is, what percentage of cases of child abuse are brought to light by teachers and school authorities? And, of course, in many cases, as we know, as we've seen in Clovis, and I can't be specific as to what cases, We've had some teachers who have been arrested for having sex with their students. Yes. In Clovis. Yes. There's in Clovis. Several. Yes. <laughs> and in, there's some in Sunnyside, and they're they're out there. I mean, okay. So I'm picking on Clovis today. Anyway, um, so the question, 
How many are turned in by teachers, school authorities, if they're not doing it themselves? <coughs> we don't. We don't have those numbers. CPS has those numbers. Okay. I don't know what percentage are actually reported, and I yeah. can I can get those numbers though. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah, but <laughs> maybe during a break mm -hmm. you can call someone. But uh, but but uh, is the percentage high? Would you say? Um, I, like I said, I, well, don't usually I, I don't know. But okay. mandated reporters um, are, like I said, it probably is high. But I, I wouldn't even want to take a guess. I don't want to give misinformation out. By law, does a teacher have to turn someone in? Well, there is a law. There's a fine if you don't if if the if the child is being abused, and that's part of um, what was happening with the Seth Ireland case. I mean, th it was reported. And when we do our mandated reporter training, what case was that again? I'm sorry, Seth Ireland. Oh yeah. Yeah. In 2008, I think. Yeah, that was a few years ago, mm -hmm. but I remember. Right. Uh, refresh our memory as to what happened in that case. Well, the uh, schools did report it, and there it was a, you know, I don't. Very I don't, high profile case. Very, there's been some high profile cases in Fresno. Here. Yeah, yes. very high profile. Right. Uh, got in the newspaper, mm -hmm. got all over uh, television news, mm -hmm. uh, was very uh, highly publicized, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it but. Here, here's a, another thing that comes to mind. Despite the publicity on some of these cases, it keeps happening. Yes, it does. I wonder why. It's really, it's really startling because lack of parenting knowledge, lack of um, maybe support systems. I mean, no one. Uh, uh, right now, I went to talk to the school uh, school board about um, comprehensive sex education, Fresno Unified School District, okay. about comprehensive sex education. We have the highest um, uh, sexually transmitted STD rates amongst teens in the nation. Hmm. So, you know, the child maltreatment, uh, teens are actually um, parents without uh, any knowledge and teens who have babies. They don't have the financial, the mental, or emotional um, ability to care for a child many times. So if a teens are having babies, that's a real high risk target group that, that we go after and say, here, look, you need support systems. It's very difficult raising a baby, and this is what you're gonna, you need to do. So a lot of times they don't have the capacity to do so. Mm -hmm. So providing, you know, comprehensive, it takes an entire community to pull together and prevent child abuse. No one agency can do it. Yeah, that's we're, true. We're just a, we're, we are a child advocacy uh, agency. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about your agency, and I got some full screens to put up. I do want to put up a full screen of that woman that, that, who was accused. Uh, in that videotape that you saw, there she is. She's the nanny. The video that we showed you in the monologue, the video that we showed you during the course of the interview. Now, I don't know what happened with this case. I tried to do some research online, couldn't find it. Uh, she was arrested, but I don't know what the outcome of the case was. Um, you know, so we can't speculate on that, and and I don't want to speculate on what was going through her mind or, or or anything else other than what we saw in that video was totally unacceptable by this by this lady right here. Um, anyway, uh, I do want to put up another couple of graphics here before we go to break, and that is the types of abuse that we see. Let's put up those graphics right now. The types of abuse, physical abuse. Uh, you can read this for yourself. Do we see the most majority of the cases that we see are physical abuse? No, it's neglect. It's neglect. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is this is a description of physical abuse, mm -hmm. injury inflicted, uh, non accidentally on a child and or unlawful corporal punishment resulting in a traumatic condition, and that's when you purposely abuse a child physically. You hit them, you smack them, you throw them across the room, up against the wall. That's what physical abuse is, right? Yes, and you, and what it, the nanny was doing what the nanny was doing. In order to get arrested, you have to leave marks on the child, right? What if there are no marks? Uh, I, what if you physically well, the, abuse a child well, if there are no marks? Then there's no proof, right? Well, there's, if, you, if you physically abuse a child, there's usually going to be marks. And there's marks on what's called the soft parts of the body. Because okay. children will fall. And if it's on the bony parts like elbows, right. forehead. But if a child has a black eye, you don't fall and get a black eye. Right, and you'll be able to tell, too, and I want to get into this a little bit more during the course of the program, you'll be able to tell also whether or not that bruise or that mark was left by a brother, a sister, or a parent, or a parent. Because, you know, brothers and sisters, I mean, my kids argue and they fight and they leave marks, you know, that's mm -hmm. just 
brother and sister type mm -hmm. thing. It, it just happens. Right. Okay, you can't totally prevent that. But um, but my kids aren't 18. They're not fighting. They're, that's that's normal kid stuff. All right. The other type of abuse, sexual abuse. Let's put that up uh, right there. We know what that is. It includes uh, includes rape, incest. How 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 common is this in Fresno County? Sexual abuse. It's very common. Uh, one in four girls and one in six boys will be molested before they reach the age of 18. Now, a new study mm. from the Center for Disease Control uh, was mm. released, and it's now one in three girls. Hispanic and, girls? Uh, in our community, because of our demographics, uh, what we interview, yes, is Hispan a seven-year-old Hispanic girl. Wow, that's amazing. And, and do, do, how do these cases get reported normally? The child usually doesn't report sexual abuse because they are groomed by the perpetrator or predator. Or they're afraid. Or they're afraid. Because, or both. Right. It's very rare that you see, uh, a, lot, a lot of times the news will show uh, abduction cases. Yeah. Like the Amber Alerts. And that's very rare because the predator grooms the, the child. Yeah. Usually it could be a father, uh, biological father, stepfather, grandfather. Um, Alexis uh, Gonzalez, uh, she, she tells her story. Yeah. It was her grandfather who molested his own daughters, and then he molested several of his uh, granddaughters. And was he, she she was molested. She was molested at the age of eight by her grandfather. She goes. She does a lot of public speaking ahead, on this that, topic. Take that tight shot um, there. No, no, no. Take take the tight shot of Esther so we can see uh, that photo there. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right there. She does public speaking to um, diminish the shame. She's a, s a sexual assault survivor. He okay. is now. I'm happy to report he's doing 99 years in jail. Okay. So it's very difficult for a child to go to court or to disclose the facts because of um, they feel shame. She and in she Fresno? was, she's in Visalia, but she does That's a lot. Right. She just did a, another. Maybe we can get her on the program here at some point. Yes, you yeah, should. Her story is amazing. Her great. bravery is amazing. All right, emotional abuse. Let's put that up. Willful cruelty or unjustified punishment, including mental suffering. And of course, uh, we see a lot of that abuse. But you say this is not that common. This mental abuse. It's more. Physical, sexual, neglect? Well, first of all, there's never just one type of abuse. If you're being sexually abused, then you're being physically abused, and you're being emotionally abused, and you're being neglected because your parents aren't protecting you. They're either, okay. they're either doing the abuse or they're allowing someone to do the abuse. And next is neglect. We talked about this. So this is number one on the list, right? Neglect? Yes. Huh. Wow. And that's through because we have such high incidence of poverty and substance abuse so if you are if you can't afford to provide for your kids or if you're high you're using meth uh you're smoking weed you're mm -hmm. you're alcohol prescription drugs you can't provide for your children if you're high all the time no you can't um anyway we're talking with esther franco we got to go to a break here 436 me tv option 11 if you want to join the conversation here on connect with me on me tv fresno on this friday morning back in a moment the Ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever croak in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law, and, and they didn't know fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me. And baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Most watched news channel in Europe. Back here on the program today, talking about child abuse, and um, so um, I, you know, it's it's very disturbing to talk about any of this, to think about it. I wasn't abused as a child. We have another piece of videotape that I want to show you. It's got some sound on it, and it's a case that didn't take place in Fresno, but we see this all the time across not only the Central Valley, but across the country. This is one news report that we found about a child abuse case that was so disturbing. I want you to listen to this and then we'll comment on the other side, okay? 
The woman you're watching was considered the perfect nanny by the parents of these twin two-year-old girls. She was a loving, loving person. But then Brad and Justine Roth's maid told them she had suspicions about the nanny. So the Roths set up this hidden camera to watch Lois Becerra, and look what they caught on tape. As Becerra puts this two-year-old down for a nap, she grabs the child's hair and throws her head down. When the child wouldn't nap, the nanny yanks her up by the leg and spanks her. I feel like I failed my family when I hired this woman to, to watch them. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Brad Roth is now urging parents everywhere to install hidden cameras. And if they catch what they believe is an abusive caregiver... We're going to click on that. He's created a website, nannyabuse.com, for them to post their video. What I'd really like is for parents before they hire a nanny to come on our site and see if whoever they've been interviewing is actually on our site. It's a great idea, says Beverly Hills private eye Robert Mann, who once owned one of LA's top nanny agencies. Any information I can get on someone who's gonna take care of my children or my client's children is invaluable, as long as it's substantiated. But legal scholars say nanny cams might violate a nanny's privacy rights. So they say parents should always notify a nanny if they're planting hidden cameras. If the objective here is to protect children, what better way than to say in advance, you know, you're going to be watched. F for fish. Brad Roth knows he might be on legally shaky he ground is. with his new website. But right now, he says he's not worried. I'm never going to let another parent go through what I went through without having a place for parents to go and voice their concerns. Well, Esther, another case, another case study of a woman who is mentally disturbed, obviously. Right. Um, and so how... How many cases do we see in Fresno County where somebody has set up a camera, a sting like that? I don't, see, is, I don't, that is that common? I don't know of any cases. I, I see them on the news just like you do. Yeah. Um, like I said, our, our, our focus is to educate the community on what is child abuse and how to prevent it. What do you think should happen to people like her? in your opinion. Well, Be honest. <laughs> now I can't comment on that. Yes, you can. It's a free country. <laughs> well, they obviously need me a Donald Trump quote <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You're going to get me in trouble. No. Um, Hang them by well, the feet or what? Well, you know, I don't, I'm not an advocate for any type of violence. Right. Because uh, I think these people were probably abused as children, and they're continuing the cycle of violence because children are born innocent, and peaceful and so we we teach them how to be violent so I you know yeah. my guess I'm not a mental health professional or medical professional but yes. my guess is that they were raised in very violent homes and they're just continuing the cycle of violence but you know what they do to these perpetrators in prison you know what happens to them mm, yes I hear you hear I hear, I, I hear too I haven't mm -hmm. been there to mm -hmm. see it but that that's what mm -hmm. I hear I mean, we all know what we're talking and about. It's, yeah, and sexual abuse uh, on children is actually getting worse because of the online, what's happening online. There was a girl in Sanger that the was abducted. Porn pornographic stuff online yes, or what? Yes, sexual yeah. exploitation. You can yeah. actually molest a child online without touching them. So now the laws have to be changed. Um, I've sat in. How, so tell us how that's done. Well, what the perpetrator does, and there were several cases here in, in Fresno. There was a... a, a one a, a couple of months ago what you do is you solicit the children uh, online and then say uh, you have like an average age of a sexual predator is a 30, 35 and over uh, Caucasian male they solicit these young girls tell them they're pretty uh, say they want to meet them T let me see a picture of you in a, in a bathing suit oh you look so pretty now let me see you topless and because of the way our social media is these these 12 year old uh, these preteen and teen girls want to be sexy want to be pretty so they have someone online telling them that that they are these things and they'll take a topless picture and then that's where they get them and they say if, if you don't do other things online then I will put, post this on Facebook I will what they do is they blackmail them and there was a case in um, actually Alameda County or Contra Costa County where I go I travel for trainings and sit in on a case review yeah, so online predators, online are, predators. Are, are, are out there in, in high numbers. In very high numbers. All right. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. If uh, one parent puts a cami camera on the other parent to see what's going on, is that legal? 
I have no idea. Like a hidden I camera. You know, I don't know. I would assume it is. If you have, uh, are you, let me ask you, caller, uh, stay there for a moment. Um, are you concerned about your husband, your boyfriend, what? Uh, it's not myself. It's someone else that I know that um, the kids always cry when he's going to take care of them. He, they cry and cry and they don't want their mom to go to work. Yeah. So she wants to put a camera in, a cami camera to see what's going on that's making these kids so hysterical. I don't think that that's illegal. I mean, I'm not an attorney, Call but I would assume if, uh, stay there, caller, I would assume if, um, you know, it, the woman is in her own home, that's her home, she owns it, okay, she co-owns the house, she can put in hidden cameras. I'm assuming, would you, would you assume call, that it's, it's in your own? I, I will would, find I out. Would, I, I will find call out. an attorney. I am not an attorney, so don't listen to me. Call the I, district attorney's office. I will call for you. You, you can get my contact information. Well, I, give her, give her your number. Uh, call me at FCAP, 268-1118, just, or go online, yeah. FCAP.org, that's F-C-C-A-P. I will find out today for you. That is a huge sign. When children are crying that they don't want to go, they don't want to go with someone, that's that's the first, how, what are the ages of the children? Yeah, what are the ages, and um, is this in Fresno or Clovis, where? Yeah, they're, they're five and seven right now, mm -hmm. but when this was going on, it was when they were six and and it's with the father uh, that I, I that I noticed it. It was last year. Uh, huh? Is I, she is is the woman concerned about it? Yes. Okay, then she ought to consult an attorney. Uh, she really should uh, consult an attorney because, you know what? I I may have spoken out of turn just now. I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but you can call Esther. She can guide you. Maybe call a district attorney's office. Yes, find she needs out. to call, call yeah. CPS too. Call CPS and ask them if that's illegal, that if, if it's legal to put a camera in your own home to monitor what your husband does uh, with your kids, since they're so hysterical. Well, when whenever, whenever a child is fearful of an adult, there's a reason. There's absolutely a reason. Think so? Because children, children are very trusting and loving. Very trust. I look at Oprah's done all these these uh, cams where you tell your children go don't go with a stranger, and when the stranger's nice and offers you a puppy, yeah, uh, or a lollipop, they'll go with the stranger. Yeah, call her. Can you do that? Can you call an, an attorney or call Esther, and maybe maybe we can uh, straighten this out for you. Well, let me give you one more thing that uh, of information that I know about his background. He, his mother was uh, always high and was um, a druggie, and always bringing men into the home. And they were always raping him and his brother. Oh, okay. wow. Okay. So they were brought up thinking that's normal. Right. That's a common scenario. Okay. Please call me at FCAP, and I, I will talk to you. Uh, call me today. Is that okay? Can you call? Can you give me your number again? Yeah. It's 268-1118. Do you get Say that again, Esther. 268-1118. Okay, I got it. You and got ask it? and ask for me. I'm I'm kind of very nervous about the whole situation myself. Okay. Don't All don't right. be nervous. You're you're protecting those children. They need help. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And Esther Franco is here. Child abuse, the topic, 436, Me TV, Option 11. You're welcome to call in with any questions very similar to that, or if you have a story of your own or a comment about some of these nasty incidents that we, we've been talking about here on the program today. Back in a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified number one rated high efficiency cabrio from Whirlpool Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Whirlpool cabrio laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're working hard to be your place.
Back here on the program with Esther Franco talking about child abuse. Let's put up some more full screen so we know what uh, we're talking about here. Child abuse of facts. Here are the facts about abuse. And let me read them off for you. I know, I know they're up on the screen, but nearly 70% of all reported sexual assaults are on children. True or false? Very true. Okay, 75% of sexual abusers or abuse survivors report excessive drug and alcohol abuse. Right. And that's to medicate the pain. Okay. Um, many MDRs never receive any adequate training in child uh, maltreatment detention or detection. Right. Mandated reporters. All right. Um, this is your organization, right? Mm -hmm. The FCCAP is the only agency offering evidence-based child sexual abuse prevention programs. Uh, to both adults and children in Fresno County, and what uh, what programs are those? Explain that. Uh, Stewards of Children is an evidence-based program. That means it's proven to work. It's also culturally competent, and it's also trauma-informed. Uh, the way trauma affects a child's brain, you have to know that there's trauma triggers, and when you and and how to. Uh, uh, in program development, you have to address those needs. So we do both adults and we do what's called a safe, uh, talking about touching, safe and unsafe uh, touches to children ages three through eight. And Tell me, what's a safe touch? A safe touch is um, maybe a hug that um, someone, uh, that it's okay with you to hug. We teach children if, if an uncle or mom's boyfriend hugs you and kisses you and you don't like it, it's okay to say no. That's an unsafe touch. Whatever makes you feel safe. It's important to teach children that they have rights. But I wanna make this very clear that no child can protect themselves against a sexual predator, the, the psychological and the physical strength uh, manipulations of a predator. Adults have to be trained and educated on how sexual predators operate. They can be trained and educated all they want, but if they have, uh, um, if they were abused as a child, and if they have drug problems, they have, they're an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You know, the education. I don't know how, how good that's what good that's going to do. I'm not sure. Well, it's the I'm first. I'm just being a devil's advocate. Yes. Here. No, I want you to because it's true. It's very difficult. I mean, the ACES study, adverse ch childhood experiences. That's 30 years old. In other words, and if, nothing. If, what nothing's improved since. If I'm a if I if I'm a if I'm a meth user. Okay, which I'm not, but if I was, what good is this education going to do me? Well, like I said, 80% uh, of all child maltreatment cases, there's substance abuse in there. So, yeah. and, and I've said, we both yeah. talked about that earlier in the program. Yeah, we did. You're yeah. right. Now, you're talking about sexual abuse. You know, as mm -hmm. a parent, and I did it too, you have to bathe your own children. Right. Until they reach a certain age. Right. According to your organization, what age is that when you have to stop and they have to do it on their own? I don't know. Great that, question, huh? huh? That's a very good question. And actually... Um, I know, because I bathed both my children, well, both of them. I, I had to, and I, I've got a disabled daughter. Right. And I don't... Partially disabled, mm -hmm. anyway. Well, I don't have children of my own, but I have. there's a lot of grandkids and nieces and nephews. And what you do is yeah, you teach them... that's not the them. same, because you're ta you're take, as a parent, you take, you're supposed to take care of them every mm -hmm. day. You're responsible 24-7. It's, it's called ages and stages. Yeah, hang on, caller. You educate yourself on ages and stages. Yes, of course, you have to bathe your child, even when they're a toddler. But and as every case is different because of the certain situation. Well, as they get older and you're bathing them, you have to teach them body parts. Right. And you ask their permission. Right. Like, can I, can I, okay, I need to clean your... But some each individual case is different. You can't put a blanket... Like at seven years old, you're going to stop bathing them because every kid is different because some kids have special needs more right, than others. Right, right. And, and special needs children are more susceptible to sexual yeah. abuse. Yeah. Okay, caller, are you there? Go ahead and turn down your TV set. You're on the air. Go ahead. Caller, are you there? Calling once, twice, three times. Hello? Okay, gone. All right, let's put up uh, some more uh, full screens. The effects of abuse. Oh, we need to break? Okay, we'll go to break and then we'll do that. Okay, back in just a moment here with Esther Franco talking about child abuse in just a moment. When you like Ventura TV Appliance on Facebook, it's nice. But when you love the KitchenAid appliances we deliver, it's even better. Our website is cool and it's a good place to start, but you really should touch the merchandise before you buy. Save big with KitchenAid. Right now, get up to a $1,000 prepaid MasterCard when you purchase select KitchenAid appliances. Get the best selection, price, and service in town without waiting. Come in to Ventura TV Appliance and touch the merchandise today. 
Attention all units. We have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on BTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. It's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. Back here on the program today on Connect With Me, we have a caller. Uh, go ahead, quickly. Uh, running short on time, but I appreciate your call. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Um, for the lady, um, the, the training that she's doing, <clears throat> the triggers. When she said about uh, the triggers, because you know what? I was raped when I was 14, yeah. and I was pulled behind a dumpster from a, a restaurant. So every time I got that smell... Mm. I, I, I didn't, for years and years and years, I had no idea what how it screwed me up in my head. And that triggers. So, I and mean, she's awesome. Your, your guest is awesome because you know what? Those triggers and knowing why you're getting all screwed up in your head and, and feeling like all, you know, it, it, it never goes away. Yeah. You know, no, it does learn really. how to deal with it. You're not alone. And, um, You're I, not alone. I think you? she. I think she's awesome because you know what? Thank you. Um, I'm I'm going to be 55 now, and um. Let me ask you, you something, know, caller. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you need any help right now getting through whatever you're going through? Uh, if you if if so, maybe Esther can can reach out and help you too. Yeah. If you if you I'm need someone to talk to you or. Have a, that comes to my house once a week, and then I go to uh, mental health as wow, well. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I grew up in L.A. This happened in L.A., and, um, you know, it's, it's and, and now I'm disabled, and, and I, you know, it's weird how things just come back, and, and it just, you know, and my right. brothers have grandchildren, and uh, my mom has great grandchildren. Um, I was raped and beaten and left behind the dumpster, and I was never able to have children. You know, oh, and and okay. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, I'm sorry too, and I I, I really am sorry that um, you had to go through that. And that, and she's 65. Right now, and it, it it stays with you forever. Yeah, apparently it did because it happened when she was fourteen. Right. And when I was so. when I was talking about Alexis, the, yeah. Alexis's story. If you if you contact me, I could mail you her st her story. Yeah, we'll she have still her has, on too. Maybe yeah, in she has trauma we'll triggers on. all the time. All right, thank you for that call, ma'am. Uh, God bless you. I, I appreciate the phone call, and I'm sorry for what you had to go through. Let's go to uh, the full screens, the effects of abuse. We need to get through these because we're almost out of time here. And, uh, okay, it's well documented that children who have been abused or neglected are more likely to experience adverse outcomes throughout their lifespan in a number of areas. Here it is, poor emotional and mental health, poor physical health, social uh, difficulties, cognitive uh, uh, dysfunction, uh, high risk uh, health behaviors and behavioral problems. You know, maybe in school, maybe in, in other types of uh, settings. Abu Let's see, hang on a second here. Caller, can you hang on a moment, please? I, I do have your call here, but hang on. Abuse within the family, let's put that up. 60% of these cases uh, where the partner is being abused, so are the children. Mothers who are battering, uh, uh, are in battering relationships are eight times more likely to hurt their kids. And children from violent homes are 74% more likely to commit crimes against persons. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Got to make it quick. Yes, hello? Yeah, quickly. We're almost out of time. Yes, I just wanted to know the number um where we could call for more information with with your guest okay appreciate it very much what's the what's the number if Two. you do if you do call in callers just out there if you have to turn down the sound on your tv set we got some feedback there your your number real quick uh two six eight one 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 eight okay and uh, myth about child abuse let's put that up there the biggest myth is that the dangers to children come from strangers not true right 
Right. Not true. Right. Not in true. most cases, the perpetrator is someone the parent child knows and is often trusted by the child and the family. That is a true fact? Yes. Yeah, stranger danger is the biggest myth. Only 10% are strangers. All right. Child abuse statistics. Before they turn 18, and I think you briefly touched on this, uh, one in six boys experienced uh, some type of form of sexual abuse. One in four girls experienced that. More than 90% of abusers are people children know, love, trust, and respect. Right. How do you know all these facts? How do you know these are true? How do you know that? Because um, our staff researches it. We work with public health. We work with national organizations like the uh, National Children's Alliance. Sensational stories in the media. We've seen them here in the city of Fresno. We've yes. seen them across the country. Uh, stories of child abuse do not capture the complexities and the scope of child uh, mistreatment. Uh, we must educate the public. Why don't they uh, provide an example of what's going on? Why is it so complex? I think it's kind of what I call the turnaway factor. Because child abuse is so disturbing, people just kind of, you know, put their hand up and say, oh gosh, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to I don't want to sit through a two-hour class to learn how sexual predators can access children because that's yeah. what it takes. And I want to put up uh, the victims of abuse. Let's put that full screen up while we take the call. A uh, call, you're on the air. Go ahead and leave that up there quickly. We're almost out of time. Okay. Oops. The victims of abuse, young victims usually cannot recognize the abuse. Most of the victims, and you can see that right up there on the screen, of CSA do not disclose for months, years on end. We can see what else is up on the screen there. Uh, let's, let's have another call here. Good morning, you're on Connect With Me. A short on time, just got about a minute or two left. Go ahead, caller. Yes, one question is, uh, if you suspect something's happening with uh, a child who you uh, know, uh, how do you report that? Uh, you, and does you the reporting become public record? Thank you. Yes, call the CP, uh, CPS hotline. It's 255-8320. And the graphic we just saw up there, thank you, caller. Uh, many of these victims uh, suffer from fear, guilt, shame, embarrassment for a lifetime. Yes, absolutely. Just like the, the caller was talking about trauma triggers. Fear, guilt, shame, embarrassment. Oh Especially with child sexual abuse. And there's, it's, it's called child sexual abuse accommodation syndrome because the child is groomed to love the predator. Right. It's very psychologically manipulative and very confusing to the child. All right. Put up the last. I think we have one more graphic, right? Do we not? Yeah, recantation. Yes. There it is right there. You can kind of read it for yourself. It occurs when children are reported they are sexually abused, subsequently state uh, that, they, uh, that their earlier report was a lie. Okay, how many times does a, in other words, how many times does a child go in to, say, CPS or wherever, some agency, and they say, yeah, I was abused, and I was sexually attacked and, and raped, and then all of a sudden they recant? How often does that happen? Uh, it's very common, recantation. It, it just Why? depends. Well, it's, are they lying? It's, are the kids lying no. when they recant? Uh, children can't. Children, um, children. Everything children know, they it's a learn. It's learned. So, how is a five-year-old going to know about sex, unless someone's te wa making them watch going porn to or out of fear? Out of fear. Out of fear. It did happen, but they're recanting. They recanting. That it did because they're they're, they're exactly. fearful of what might happen. When a lot they get of times, home. mom. Um, because the, uh, oftentimes the male, if usually it's male on female uh, sexual abuse, if the male is the, the uh, breadwinner in the home, so if he gets deported or if he gets run out of the home, then the family's left with no financial support. All right. Had a caller say, what do you do to report child abuse? Call you? Call CPS? Uh, yes. You can call us, but uh, please okay, call quickly. CPS, 255-8320, CPS okay. hotline. All right. And your number quickly, got 10 seconds. 268-1118. All right. Esther Franco, always good to see Thanks. you. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. You're a very pleasant young lady. I appreciate it very okay. much. Monday, we've got Dennis Hart. Oh, my goodness. The fireworks will be exploding here on the set on Monday with Dennis Hart here. Have a great weekend. See you back then.